for serving for you. How do I look, huh? You look awesome. Oh, stop. Awesome. <laughs> Put that on camera. Awesome. Stop. He looks awesome. Okay, question. Tell us uh, how you feel like things are going so far in the second set. Um, you know, it's nice to get back on the field. I thought, uh, you know, today the, I thought the kids had, had good energy. Uh, you know, we're getting... I guess the multiples, right? You're getting uh, multiple defenses, multiple uh, offensive, you know, uh, obviously plays, formations. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, this is kind of that, that really fun time, in my opinion, of the, the kids are really uh, uh, excited to be out. You know, there's a lot of uh, energy on both sides of the ball. There's a lot of new things, a lot of new wrinkles being introduced. And uh, it's just fun kind of watching some of these, some of these guys mature into understanding what it's going to take to be, uh, you know, a good contributing member to the team. As you reviewed things that from that first week, what were some of the things that you had emphasized coming into this week of practice? Well, we're going to always continue. Um, you know, the things you saw, uh, our emphasis periods is uh, we're team tackling a bunch. You know, we're starting practices with, with uh, different types of either a team tackling, which we're calling a layer tackling, where you're going to see multiple layers of players uh, fit off of one another. Uh, when the ball is outside the um, the numbers, and then you saw us uh, do the little circuit today with some more of the finish elements of the tackle, where you're seeing people uh, thud up on each other, uh, wrap up, run through contact. So the the tackling, the finishing, uh, those things are going to continue uh, to be emphasis. Uh, and then you know we always. Uh, a big point of emphasis for the entire defense is improving our pass defense, and that's pass rush, that's integrity of the pass rush, and then how we're playing some different concepts in the back end to help our players. Is there a player or two that uh, catch your attention so far that maybe is, I don't know, surprised, but jumping up and uh, impressing you? You know, I think the some of the new guys in the back end. It's uh, you know, it's it's, uh, it's been good to see kind of what their skill is going to be. Um, you know, Jair I think is uh, really showing that he's a, a talented young man. Uh, Marcus Harris is a, a extremely talented player on the outside. Knowles having a good camp. Craig's having a good camp. Uh, Miles Williams, uh, you know, he was going through a tackle drill today, and I mentioned like technician, like he's extremely coachable, doing all the things we're asking him to do uh, on the field in that regard. Uh, Matt Jit, Matt Little John is continuing. Uh, to make some strides. So in these settings, uh, without playing live football, uh, a bunch of my energy goes to the back end because I think you get a, you get an unfair assessment of the guys up front. Uh, if you can't go live and you can't leave your feet to tackle, um, offensive line, you know, same thing for them is they can't leave their feet to finish blocks. Uh, you know, I don't think it's quite a fair fight to assess those guys until we go live. But the guys in the back end, they're playing full speed. Uh, so I think we're getting a, a real good uh, feel for what uh, their skill is. Encouraged by that group. Yes. Yeah, I'm encouraged. Like uh, I got a ton of belief in, in Trey and Terrence, uh, and uh, you know we're just continuing to put our heads together and trying to put the best uh, uh, technique schematics that we can put together along with what, what's best for the players and what's best for the team. Are the PBs pretty much locked into? specific spots or are you moving some of them around still? No, I think there's several guys that have uh, um, have the capacity to play multiple positions. I know Colin Gamble could play inside, Colin could play outside. Uh, I think Jair could play outside or Jair could play inside. So, uh, you know, and then kind of based on some of the health or availability of some of the other guys, uh, we might ask them to play a position for a few snaps just to help the rest of the group get through practice. How do you feel about the depth there? Is it where you want it to be? Or are you kind of hoping to build some more there? How's that going? Uh, you know, my experience, the depth is never good enough. Um, you know, college football is a, is a huge war of attrition, um, you know, with, uh, with guys that have been here, guys that are either coming back from injury, uh, you know, new guys that are joining us, that the, the, the battle of attrition uh, is not only the, the, the injuries, but just the in and out with the, with the portal. So uh, I don't think I'll ever be um, adequately, um, you know, feeling good about the depth of, of anybody on, on defense. Uh, it feels like at corner, both those guys play with a lot of confidence, Noel, Marcus. Uh, what's the key to being a successful cornerback in, in your system? Well, for us, I think first thing is knowledge. So we talk about this as a defense is knowledge leads to confidence. Confidence leads to belief. And when you believe in yourself, then you got to let it rip. Uh, so to play on the perimeter, to play on the edge, to play uh, in that kind of that, that, uh, that showcase position, you have to know what you're doing. And then I think you have to have a lot of confidence in what you're doing. And then I think you have to believe in yourself. And, and then it goes back to, you know, uh, you know, belief isn't always making the play. Sometimes the other guy will, will make a good play, but believing in yourself to come back and battle back and do it again. So uh, a lot of that's the, just the, the mental toughness uh, and the resiliency to play the position makes those guys good. Miles was making a couple plays here towards the end of practice. What stood out about his development since he's in his time here? Yeah, and I think, you know, kind of what I said earlier, it's, it's you know, he's doing things uh, exactly the way we're asking him to do it. And I think when you do that, you find 
find yourself uh, around the ball and, and you can find yourself uh, making some plays. Talk a little bit about um, what you saw from Cade last season that you know impressed you as a freshman coming in and what did he do to, to earn that spot on the field and, and, uh, and then what's he got to do to take the next step uh, here this spring and summer? Cade showed that he was a, a dynamic athlete and you, you saw the ability for him to, to burst and finish. Uh, he was ex, uh, extremely inexperienced um, as a player, uh, but I thought what he did was a really good job of managing kind of his emotions uh, and collectively on how we instructed him. Um, he, he didn't have a full backpack. You know, we weren't asking him to carry uh, even his load. It was, hey, man, you just you just focus on these things. Let the other ten guys kind of kind of support her. You know, we call it, they need to carry a little more of the water, uh, and just go out there and play like a play like a, a, a younger player. Don't put a lot on him, and and let his ability shine. And uh, I think that's one of those. I think less is more when a young player with has that has talent goes out there. Uh, I think uh, I think coaches can hurt him more than they can help him. And, and so you put more on him this summer, and, and what do you expect out of him? Uh, what's the next step in you know, next season? Yeah, K needs to be a person that uh, impacts the team. You know, and, and uh, that can mean a lot of different things. That's on the field, that's uh, in the meeting room, that's in the locker room, that's with uh, some of the very, very young, inexperienced players we have in our room. Uh, it's his opportunity to pay it forward. Um, Jackson paid it, you know, Jackson took Kate under his wing. You know, if you watch the last six games of the year, um, the linebacker coach wasn't coaching Kate. Jackson was coaching Kate. So now Kate needs to, needs to pay it forward. And Kate hasn't practiced yet, but what are you seeing in his development, his maturity that, that lets you know he's going in the right direction? Uh, how he talks, how he handles himself in the meeting room. Uh, you know, he's out here doing the walkthroughs. He's the first guy in line doing the walkthroughs. He's the first guy answering the question in the meeting room. Um, so uh, I, I think Kate's on the, on the right path. Uh, and again, I, th I think he is a, a very talented athlete that, that can be uh, as good a linebacker as we've had here in a long time. A lot of times with those younger guys, the want to kind of outshines the mental side of it. How is he on the mental side and how has he continued to grow in that area? Uh, Cade? Yeah. Uh, you know, Cade is, uh, you know, Cade shares some similarities. So I think Cade, if I remember right, I think Cade might have been the, the sixth young man uh, that I've had opportunity to coach to, to earn some type of freshman All-American awards. Um, and the, the, the trait that all the kids, with the exception of one, is they had, um, they were mature beyond their experience. And I think that's the, that was that's the common denominator that I've had with five of those six guys is is how life life wasn't the game wasn't bigger than what they were ready for. They were extremely mature. Uh, they had a consistency in their life, and when the opportunity arose, they you know they had the talent to go along with that mental uh, frame of mind. He was one of those five. He's one of those five. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. Take care.